You're watching the Chewy Network with Mike Benio and Mr. Kinsman. And I thought being attracted to your own flattered penis could possibly be the worst fetish. Oh, hello, and welcome to Chewing the Cud, your weekly camp kaleidoscope of kitsch. I'm here with the ever-shiny Mist. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you very much. A little bit unwell after that story, but other than that, doing fine. Not a story. <sighs> it's not my fetish. I just thought it could be a very bad fetish to have. It's the con... Anyway, I'm going to be bringing you a story about a Bridgerton star who's gone all milky, and then we get all intimate in Crafty Queens. Worried. And then we have a game that you can play along with too. But on the screen now you can see our contact details. It's at the Could TV on your social media. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can do on YouTube. Just search for Chewing the Cud. And as the names of people who've reached out and touched our souls go along the bottom of the screen, Mike gets ready to bring us up to date on things you may have missed from the news in The Buzz. So I think we just need to stop and take a helicopter view for a moment to mm -hmm. really synergise what we're thinking of and blue sky out what our optional extras are. OK. Did you understand any of that? Unfortunately, I do have a, a day job in yeah. a corporate world, and yeah, sadly, it's scary. Horror, it isn't, isn't it? It is. Um, this is a story about possibly some of the cringiest things that Gen Z find about working in modern offices, mm -hmm. and that is work speak or corporate jargon speak. And I get it. Oh yeah, it was cringy. It's always when I started in the corporate world ten years ago. It's things like circle back. Basically, Jen said they're just going, can we just speak in normal language? Yes. Yeah, because they're just, they're, they're not with the riz of all that sort of stuff. The riz. It's what Jen Zed is called, charisma. It's, yeah, it's like, come on, people. I, I, I think both are equally irritating. Just uh, use proper English. Why? I actually quite like corporate speak. Right? I like the way that um, language evolves and changes in the situation. Oh, no, I, I love that, but there's just something about the... It's almost like gatekeeping a culture. Like, you have to, you have to be in it to understand it. There's, yeah. there's, there's kind of a... Everyone can understand it. <sighs> if you said to someone, I'm going to blue sky th think this, it's like, all right. I didn't know what that meant for the first couple of times I heard it. There was a lot of times where I was just going... For for a good while until I went oh okay I get I get the and it, it is good shorthand after that point I I yeah. get it but close the loop I like that phrase I usually Reply find fly all <laughs> <laughs> I think in all the times that I have been in office places where they're doing that mm -hmm. it's because they want to be wanky is there some You're kind not of to do that in office places <laughs> <laughs> I've checked no if I I think there's a strange I might be in an office, but I'm cool guys kind of vibe to it. And no, it just, nobody's it, cool that works in an office. No, they're not. And that's the point. It, it, I find it a bit of a turn off. And I, I bet the problem is I've been guilty of it. I've absolutely done it. Yeah, well, Jen's here saying we're not doing it. We're just going to use normal language. And when someone says, like, let's blue sky this deal, let's just think, you know, let's think about it creatively. Is what I, I would be with them on that. But then they will replace things with their own words like Riz. It's charisma. Uh, but English in, as a language evolves and changes. It so. does, and I agree with that. But as I said, these group, enjoy it. these group think uh, areas. I like Riz. No, I don't like that. I like Riz because it makes me think of mispronouncing um, cigarette papers. Oh, yeah, you've made this point before. It's not, so, it's not Rizla, it's, no, it's Rizla. Ri Lacroix. Because it's, <laughs> it's of the cross, which is what mm -hmm. the cross is. It's not Rizla. Anyway, moving on from that story to something less, less irritating and more up your alley. Oh, um, hey. And this is a story about a woman who was tied up in a, in a, a um, forest by her husband for 40 days. How aroused are you right now? Um, Being tied up in a forest for 40 days. Oh, oh, she does not look like she enjoyed that. She didn't. However, it's come to light she actually tied herself up. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't really... She wasn't tied up by her husband. She did it to get him in trouble. Oh, what a... What a mare. How did they prove that and figure that out? She admitted it. <laughs> like, what a waste of me! What a waste of time, then! She made news. 
What did she? Um, why did she finally decide to confess? Do we know? Because she could. It was just. Don't worry, it's a joke. It's gone too far now. He's Very going much. to go to prison. I didn't really mean for it to go that far. He's been dead twenty years. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she was saying that it, it changed to a train. It was it was going a bit deep in. It's like, oh no, she did it herself. How did she make sure she would be fi- found in time to be saved? Well, she wasn't really in danger. She tied herself up. Y- yeah, but if she did it so well that it was convincing that she couldn't have escaped for forty days, like it's either got to be like actually done or very very well done enough for her to escape. If you get what I mean, do you get understand what yeah. I'm thinking? Yeah, no. <laughs> Because if you tie yourself up, you know how you tie yourself up. So if you tied it, you're going to be able to untie it. Uh, mm, yeah, but if that's true, then then it's obvious that you could untie it. It's not necessarily obvious. You either have to take... Well, you either have to do it in a way where it's really not obvious and that's massively clever and complicated, or do it in a way where you actually have done it and just arrange for, to make sure that, oh, I know a bus is going to come by here within 40 days, so I will be found, you know? How do you know a bus is going to go past in 40 days? You obviously don't live in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> it's due. <laughs> it's, it's, it's due to be around here in the next 10 days, whether it turns up or not. It's anyone's guess. <laughs> Isn't that right, Margot? Oh, she died. Um... <laughs> yeah. If, like Miss, you don't know how buses work in the UK, why not share that with us at the Could TV on social media? And that brings us to our story of the week. What's your plans when you retire? Oh, it's a long time off, yeah. Three years is a long time. Oh, you can shut your face. I am not that old, ladies and gentlemen. And everybody else. I am... Got a telegram from the king the other week. I don't plan on retiring for a while. I want to make sure I've got a nice little nest egg when the time comes. A long, long time from now. Which is actually quite irritating because I don't want to have to work all that time. So I, I always have a joke that I have got a very clever plan for when I retire. Mm-hmm. And that's to sell my house. Okay. Because then I've got money. Mm-hmm. And then I can just go and live in a smaller house. Yeah. Because I'll just be me. There are some people who retire and just go, I'm going to live in a cruise from now on. Oh, no, I hate cruises. Yeah, but for people who like cruises, actually, it's quite a sound financial thing to do. They sell the house or rent it. That's a nice little nest egg or a good wadge of money. And it's actually cheaper than paying for a care home, and you get much better quality of being looked after. I'm not going into care home. I'm going to be a burden to society in my own home. (laughs) Care home. Anyway, um... This is a story Mm -hmm. about a gentleman who's been offered a retirement plan, right, while he's still at the peak of his career, right? And that's to basically go on Cam Soda. This is news of a French pole vaulter who has been offered to do porn once he's finished his pole vaulting because he has a massive penis that stopped him winning gold <laughs> <laughs> yes i saw this I, I, I as far as i'm aware mm-hmm. they were actually never in line for even a bronze for that that actually wasn't the I deciding fact a flying moose a penis is huge <laughs> right um anthony amoretti yes right french massive cock pole vaulter that's his that's the bio that's all his wikipedia will ever say there it is yeah. Nice bum, too. He does have an... Good arms. A, a, good chest. I hate to say... Meaty uh, cock. I hate to, hate to say it brings the top out of me. I'm actually more interested in his bum, because it's a very nice little pert one. That... It brings the top out in you. It does. <laughs> so a non-existent part of mist comes out. <laughs> oh, first me. Of course, yeah. Right. No, I did see that, and it does look very big when it's whacking into that, uh-huh. but and trust me, I've looked... Every other picture, it's not quite as prominent as apart from when it's being moved right to the front by so, something he's trying to get his leg over. I think um, that he's cracked a semi. He's got yeah. very excited going over that pole. Yeah, that's what I think it because is. Because they're not allowed to have sex in the Olympic Village until after they've pre- done their, their event. Well, Tom Daly showed us so those anti-sex beds, didn't they? They don't work. They don't. And, and, oh, look, there's an anti-sex bed. Just shag on the kitchen table. <laughs> Else. <laughs> but yeah, two hundred fifty thousand dollars he's been offered to whack it out for everyone to see. 
Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'd give him a hand. And that's all the that's all all the buzz for this week. Thanks for that, Mike. Um, yeah, that's another one to add to me. Uh, Little portfolio of videos to watch on the train. You're welcome, Mist. Stay right there. As coming up after this short break, Mist brings us up to date with celebrity news in showbiz. Oh, welcome back. You're watching Chewing the Cud. And this is the part of the show where we look into the what who's and the who's what's of the world of celebrity. And that's for Mist in the showbiz. <laughs> Just before we start, Mist. Gallery, can you smell something weird? Oh, no, it's okay. I've worked out what it is. Sorry. <coughs> Fresh as a daisy, I would say. Very old daisy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit all like pop puree at the moment. It's not like pop puree. It's like you put it in the compost bin. <laughs> <laughs> Very old anyway, smells. The show business musky. Musky is the word. Wanted. Anyway, showbiz. Show, we're trying to be professional here. Of course you are. Yes. I've got showbiz news for you. Come on you. then. Right. Get with it. So first up... Compost crutch. Shit. <laughs> 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 Compost crutch. If that becomes a thing, I'm blaming you. Right. So first up, we have Dylan and the Moon. Mm-hmm. Now, they're uh, an indie pop singer, mm -hmm. um, full name Dylan Holly Holloway, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, they've been releasing singles since 2022, mm -hmm. um, including Lemons with a certain Jason Derulo. I like Jason Derulo, mm -hmm. just because you know it's one of his songs. Jason Derulo. <laughs> Start of yeah. I love it. Actually, I'm not a big fan of that. It's, it's good, it's good, but it's not my favourite. Nice Day is my favourite. Re it's a really nice song. Anyway. They've been re releasing songs in that time, and it's also around about then that they uh, came out as tran transitioning and being on testosterone and making their journey, because you probably know them from before they transitioned, because they were a singer back then. They were part of the duo in, oh, what was it, um, Series 9 of The X Factor? Don't know, didn't watch X Factor. <laughs> I watched Series 1 of The X Factor and went, oh, right, this is just like all the other reality TV shows singing on off. Yeah, well, there was quite a memorable moment because they came on as part of a band called MK1. And it, uh, Dylan, when they were a girl, and uh, this uh, two, two fellas with them, one who was a very good rapper, and the other guy who looked like their accountant who joined them on stage. Okay. It was a bit of a disaster because those two were brilliant and he was, he, he was part of the trio, but it just, as a performer, wasn't really cutting it. And it was a really cringy moment where they just said to them outright, if you want to carry on, you're going to have to be a duo, otherwise you're not carrying on. And it was quite painful because you could tell they were really quite close friends. Okay. But anyway, ancient history, that... And they've they've moved on. They produced in their career, and and they did release some quite good music as a female artist. But then transitioned. Now, what's really making it interesting is they're taking advantage of all this back catalogue that they have, mm -hmm. and they're releasing new versions of songs that they've already done. But of course, with the T and the transitioning, their voice has changed. Right. So they're whole new versions and really different takes on the songs, and they're pretty beautiful. Mm -hmm. The real kicker is when they duet with themselves. That's cool. It's, it's actually really quite beautiful, some of the takes on. The particular one, mm -hmm. that if you get a chance to see it, because it's, it's really quite beautiful, there's one where they sing in a three-part harmony. Mm -hmm. So three different states, so like uh, 2018, 2022, and 2024. Mm -hmm beginning, during, after, mm -hmm. and they're three very different tonal voices, and they sing um, Yellow, but from Coldplay. Okay, cool. And it's genuinely really quite beautiful hearing these different tones, and mm -hmm. they harmonise beautifully. Um, and, yeah, that's that's what they're doing. They've got um, lots of music coming out at the moment, and, um, yeah, I didn't really know about them too much. I've seen that moment in Series 9 back then, because that's when I used to watch it. Um, but... 
yeah, um, there are new artists I've discovered now, and I really quite like them. Um, One video to actually watch is they did a video where they remade the video as well. So they've re-sung the song and redone the video with the same people in the same locations. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's almost shot for shot, isn't it? Exactly. And that is a stunning video. Mm -hmm. A stunning song too. So yeah, we love Dylan. Yeah, 100%. On to our next little uh, story. So th this was one quite enjoyed researching. Um, yeah, so the fashion house Low, mm -hmm. they've brought out a T-shirt, very much in the style of um, Frankie Says Relax. Okay. So it's black. Poppers. But plain black text on a white T-shirt kind oh, okay. of thing. Um, so it's so not about anal sex then? Mm, not anal sex, no. Okay. Basically, it says, drink your milk. Okay. And it's all to help raise money for this LGP. Yeah, kind of giving it away too early here. Um, so, what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it's all to promote money and raise money for this um, LGBTQ charity mm -hmm. called the uh, Shameless Project. And it's all about raising funds for charities all around the world that are non profits trying to promote a shameless world for our community. For the okay. Community. And it's all done by Jonathan Bailey. We love Jonathan Bailey. We do love two him. Reasons. Well, yeah, I, I, I love him for two reasons now as well. His charitable work and... Oh, see, I don't really watch Bridgerton and all the other things. This video, it's especially the audio. He's promoting it. It's just him opening up a fridge and drinking some milk. That's all it is. But the sound of it and the cheeky grin and the licking of the li it, The sound of someone drinking milk has got you excited. Oh. You be careful wearing that skirt because your hands <laughs> going iron, iron. I don't want to see that. <laughs> it's, it's filthy. That's all there is to it. It's just filth. I think it's suggestive rather than filth. It, oh. it's like the stuff you watch on a train. It's... <laughs> He's never going to let me live that down. Yeah. It's it's very sexual. It's and and yeah. Okay, so the t-shirts do cost one hundred and seventy-five pounds. Okay, was interested. Less interested now. Oh, but mm. if they'd have said it was fifteen quid, I'd have probably bought one. Oh, but hundred pound for a white t-shirt. Oh, well, it's, it's got to be that white t-shirt, right? It's going to be no. It's one hundred and seventy-five pounds. No. It's the one he's sweated in and covered himself in milk in, isn't it? Ooh. Bet that'd go for a, <laughs> a million and seventy-five. That would. You don't have that much money. Oh no, no, I don't. Not no. You'd be bidding for it though. <laughs> and do we have a hundred thousand pounds? Me, miss, you've got no money. Shut up. <laughs> That's not going to happen. I wouldn't be able to raise my hand. Damn it. Anyway. Never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Never actually rub yourself in my presence. In a skirt. <laughs> it's not a skirt. It's a very flimsy kilt. Anyway, next story. Actor Brandon Flynn. Uh, now, you may recognise them from 13 Reasons Why, and they had a role in Ratchet, and they've been, been in lots of different bits of bobs. Also quite handsome. It, it really is a bit of a looker. You've not got laid for a long time, though, have you? I haven't got laid in a very long time. And Desperation is pouring off. To be it's by Calvin Klein. <laughs> Desperation. <laughs> to be fair, he's a little a bit... Well, he's, he is coming up for 30, but he's one of those guys who really doesn't look it. Like, that, that guy will be a twink for a long, long time. Like Troy Sivan. Yeah. So... They've got a new project coming up. Um, they're basically going to adapt a 1994 novel called The Rent Boy. Or ooh. just Rent Boy, rather, sorry. Should I do that again? No, no, ooh, <laughs> I'm going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that book. Oh, you know it? I know it. Ooh. I have read things. Oh, I, I haven't read it. I've only read the synopsis, and it sounds cool enough. Uh -huh. So basically, it's uh, by an American author called Gary Indiana, and they're going to adapt it for the big screen. Um, and apparently they've become very good friends, uh, the author. He's now 84, and he's 30, and they've gone hanging out in gay bars around Brooklyn to kind of bond and develop the story. And apparently he can still drink people under the table. He's well, you take out your dentures, don't you? 
<laughs> They've had a good time, apparently. But the story does... You, you can probably verify this, then. The novel is a black comedy combining murder and cr with crime, sex and desire, taking readers on a hysterical romp mm -hmm. um, through contemporary culture, well, 1994 culture. Um, Rent Boy follows Danny, an attractive waiter, architectural student and part-time sex worker who spends his evenings in New York serving cocktails and servicing horny businessmen. Cocktails. Mm-hmm. There he is. It's very cute. He is, isn't he? Isn't I wish I'd look like that at 30. <laughs> You wish you look like that at 18. Um, <laughs> his nipples are asymmetric, which I'm not mad about. Mm, I think that, that's might be where he's leaning. But anyway, the plot, apparently, is that his world, this is Danny the character, is upended when he meets a fellow gay sex worker who introduces him to the world of organ harvesting mm -hmm. and becomes embroiled in a theft ring centering around a crazy old doctor and a crackpot nurse. That's really the plot. It's really the plot. I need to read this book it's immediately. So <laughs> you, when you start when you start reading it, it's very light light hearted and kinda yeah. like, oh it's a little bit sexy, a little bit fun. Oh, okay, and then you go, It's what? It's doing what? Sorry. <laughs> just, you know, whilst you whilst, <laughs> what did I do then? <laughs> whilst you're down there, just you know, like slice them open, take out a kidney. Is that's what's going on? Not going to spoil it for anybody because spoilers are rude. Um anyway, that's all from the showbiz this week. Thanks for that, Mist. Always nice to know that you know, we've got some, basically some low-rent porn for you. Um, but don't go anywhere, because coming up next we have a game to play in our Game of the Week. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud with me, don't do that, Mike Benyon Rowe and him, um, <laughs> Swamp Crotch. Now it's time for the part of the show where we play a little game. And this is for our very own home sewn person. So off you pop. I did not make these myself. No, you've bought some, got someone else to do it for you. That's <laughs> a crafts project. That. Game of the week. So our, our kilted, skirted, um, home sewn mist is currently in the special area and has the Lazy Susan's question roulette. Are you ready there? I am ready in my perfectly normal shop-bought kilt uh, that I am now going to do the quiz. Nice. Thanks. Horrible, oh, horrible man. Right, OK. Are you ready? I am. Right. In. Uh, oh, somebody's greased the wheel. Let's start it. Movies. So, what sculpture can be found on the top of the Corcovado mountain? Corcovado? I might not be pronouncing that properly. It's the Jesus one, isn't it? Mm, let's find out. Jesus what? You, you, you're on the right track, but I need the specific. Jesus to a child by um, George Michael. No, it's Christ the Redeemer. Not quite sure why that's a movie question, but hey-ho. Um, right, moving again. Do, 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 do. Music. Okay, right. In architecture, what do you call a building constructed strictly as a decoration and not as a house or a shelter? What? What do you call uh -huh. a building that has been constructed just to look pretty? It's not meant to be a house or anything. Okay, just to be there. Just to be there. No real use or function. Just to be pretty. Mm. See, the, the word pretty is making me think it's not Mr. Kinsman. So, um, a folly. That is exactly correct. And that's also a word you can't use to describe me. Uh, no, because again, it means pretty building. I'm built quite beautifully, thank you very much. Cool. Music! Wow. Stanislavski method and Meisner are all techniques commonly used by which profession? Fisting. Mm -mm. They are. These are all methods that I have used in my life. Fisting. No. They are not fisting methods. <laughs> but they are all methods I used in the previous life. Go on then, what are they? Stanislavski, Metha, Method and Meisner. So what are they? I'm asking you the answer because you're saying it's not fisting. Oh, they, they are methods of acting. 
You've done acting. I was an actor once, a long, long time ago. I wasn't a very good one, which is why I don't do it anymore. Okay. I know my weaknesses. General knowledge. Okay. Which Yugoslavian-born artist refers to herself as the grandmother of performance art? Ethel Merman. Oh, do you know what? I didn't know this one either. Um, it's Ethel Merman. <laughs> it's not Ethel Merman. It's Marina Abrovnik. Oh. I know you learn something new every also day. Also know as Ethel Merman. <laughs> really? Because I actually wouldn't know. I didn't think Ethel Merman had another name, but it's possible. Yeah, it's true. I will have to Google that later. Don't bother, I'll just save yourself some time. All right, go on, give us another spin. Uh, I like to check my facts. No, you don't. I bloody do. So you do the showbiz. <laughs> I researched that! After the initial researchers robbed them from another newsworthy um, magazine. Movies! Okay. I'm not too sure... Anyway, uh, what are the three secondary colours? Now, if I've learned anything from Mika... Mm -hmm. <laughs> brown, blue and violet sky. No. No. It, 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 close. It, you could have gone in that green, purple, purple and orange. Oh, OK, purple. Yeah, purple was in there at least. There you go. Right, let's try the nice. Do do do. Be helpful, like a be purple, like a be anything you like. Green gotta be green, gotta be everything more. Why don't you like me? Why don't you like me? Is it because I am a whore? You can see why he does the thing usually with a gag in his mouth. Um, anyway, well, what I do in the privacy of my own bedroom slash public bar is nothing but my own business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's everybody's business. We can all see you whilst we're going up to the bar ourselves. Anyway, what is the name for a group of performers in a classical Greek play who comment on the dramatic action? These are all good questions. Is it wanted um, commentary or not wanted commentary? Uh, depends on the play, really. If it's unwanted, it's a heckler. If not, it's a narrator. No, it's a collective group. So it's not a commenter, it's commenters, but all speaking as one in unison. All as one in unison? Mm hmm In classical Greek theater. I don't even need to refer to the cards of this one, I know it. Because you were around at the time. Um, not denying it, not just saying, no denying, no nothing. Um, I have been reincarnated in this. Yes, it is. Well done, a chorus. And that's any group of people making noise with their face. Yeah, I think that's why there's... it's not an orgy. It's a chorus of sex. It's it's where it's where the word comes from, really. Uh, do, 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 do. Sports. Sorry, we've got a sports question. I have no problem with sports. I'm all about the balls. And the... I was playing sports last night. Water sports. Golf. I had golf. I had golf mallets. Inserted where? No, we're hitting the round thing into the thing over the clown. Did you do crazy golf as a date night thing? It wasn't a date night thing. Me and a couple of guys from work. It doesn't count as sport. I, it was hot, it was sweaty, and I was drunk at sport. That's not how sport works. Then you're not doing sport right. Just saying. This is why I don't do sport. Right. Anyway, which term describes any work of art that does not represent recognisable objects? Um, something that doesn't isn't a recognisable object. Mm hmm Now... If I'm channeling my grandparents, it'd be shit that. <laughs> um, if I'm channeling art people, oh, it'd, it'd be amazing, isn't it lovely? And it's like, oh, it's yeah, scary. it's the kind of art those people usually really like, or um, at least started out on. Finger painting. No, it's like it, it's one of the staples of, of modern art of the of the of, one of the staples. Yeah, or one of the beginnings of modern art. Stapler, that's a staples. No. It's a form of art. There's no art form called the staple art. There is now, I've just invented it. Oh, you're a genius. 
Do I have so, an answer, please? I've given you many answers. A, 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 an actual attempt to correct one. I've given you one. The answer is abstract. Ah. Mm-hmm. Let's have another go. You just didn't quite get how I was answering the question because I was being abstract. Oh, look at you trying to be clever retrospectively. Uh-huh. General knowledge. Like someone tried to be thin retrospectively. <laughs> Hey, it's beginning to work slowly. I've, I've, I've lost £10. So have I, but I could put my wallet through a wash. Anyway. In 2016, which British artist was given the exclusive right to use Vanta Black in the blackest material in the world? I want to say Damien Hurst. No. I, I, I do know about this. But I, d- I do know that, that a revenge artist brought out the pinkest pink. Yeah, that's why I know about it. Um, more, more because of what this person did to get it. Like, oh, you can't use my black. It's phantom. It's the blackest black in the world. I was like, well, great. This is the pinkest pink. Yeah. No idea. Anish Kapoor. Uh, yeah, because the, the person that brought out the pink has been also banned Anish Kapoor from the mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think made it free for absolutely everybody else. Yeah, unless you were Anish Kapoor. Yeah, I mean, I know I, did, I wouldn't have known that name to, if I was to, I, I wouldn't, if I was uh, guessing, I wouldn't know that name either, but I do know that story. Mm-hmm. It's a very good one. You want another one? I suppose so. Okay. Oh, oh. Oof. Right. A quick spin. General knowledge again. Okay. Which number is the Roman numeral for IV? Ask that question again. Which number is the Roman numeral for IV? It's four. Yeah. But I, I would have thought that the what the number. Yeah, it's just... That would have given away the answer. Anyway, you got it right. Well done. I know I did. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's not a hard one. General knowledge. Which American talk show host is also, has also hosted the Oscars ceremony in 2017? Yeah, anyway, um, I think that's enough for now. Um, but coming up after this short break, Miss Briggs is looking to something a little bit more creative than his mind in Crafty Queens. Welcome back, and you're still here with Mike and Mist and Chewing the Cud. Now it's time to do something that Mist once referred to as his personal favourite, as it's Mist in Crafty Queens. Now, Mike, I'm uh, quite a hair suit gentleman, and you wouldn't know this, but uh, I do I do a bit of manscaping down below. Manscaping? Manscaping, yes. Manscaping? I've heard the lawnmower going in the bathroom before a show. Let, let's just say it's, it's, it's very clean cut, very trim. Ah, uh, OK. Very trim. You're overly trimmed. Uh, yes. OK. Yes. Um, but apparently that's, that's not very, very good anymore. Um, people, people like a little bush these days. It's fashion, it's fashion swung the other way. OK. And, and, and I know you as a, as a boldy gentleman. I, I, I was a bit worried you might be a bit boldy down there as no, well. No, no, no. I have, I have hair everywhere apart from the top of my head. Is it just as ginger? Yes. Oh, dear. That's another problem we can solve with our Crafty Queens today. You can solve my massive <laughs> as a problem with Crafty Queens. Mm. Right, you'll have a little package I've got for you got from a non-disclosed store. If you open that up, <laughs> a non-disclosed store. A non-disclosed store. Do you want to disclose where you got this from? I don't want to disclose where I got this from. Please disclose where you got this. <laughs> I know where I got this from. Uh-huh, not so what you I. think. Anyway, if you open it up, you will notice you've got a nice little g-string. You just use the words "nice g-string." <laughs> nice g-string. I'm quite a fan of the g-string, to be honest. Are you? But yeah, these are particularly uh, uh, tight ones. They are deliberately small because we are not going to be using them as a g-string. Oh no, 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 no! This is to make your own magnificent merkin. Okay. <laughs> now, to make our merkin, um, we uh, do not need to be covering up the main event. So. You're going to take your G-string uh-huh. and just where you can see the little bulge of where um, your 
Percy Pecker would normally pop out. Cock pouch, yeah. Yes, that bit. I want you to make a little incision. L the size is up to you. You know your own appendages. And just uh, give it a little chop. Is it for the meat or the meat and the veg? Um, it, up to you, really, because we all um, have a different place where we want to put the cock ring for doing what it needs to do. If you want to lift all of it to the front, make it slightly larger to accommodate the balls. If you just want your what, winkle to the front, just enough for your winkle. Winkle? Yes. You, 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 you know how much Win will, uh, will need to be moved to accommodate. So that's the first incision I want you to make. Okay. Okay. You will also see that I've got you some age-appropriate hair colour. Okay. A nice big triangle. Now, it's up to you. People do like hair back. Apparently that's now a thing, and, and, and trimming it too far back is too much. Okay. But with this Merkin, it's up to you. You can go for a nice triangle. You can go for a Brazilian strip. It's, it's, it's all up to you. And if you do want to cover up the grey hair, um, I've also arranged for you to have... So I had a... So what do I do with this first? Well, first what you're going to do is you're going to cut it out into the portion and the shape that you want. Okay. And then you're going so to... How do, so do, what? Just, just just chop into it? Just chop into it. It's just a bit of old cushion. I'm going to go for a triangle, so I'm just going to take the end of this. You don't need much. Okay, I've gone for what I call the Hitler. The Hitler. The Hitler. Just a Can it not bit. be the Charlie Chaplin? No, it's the Hitler. <laughs> okay. It's going, invade, it's going to invade the Rhineland. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can see where you're going there. So if you just take that off. And it looks quite angry when on the stage. Yeah. Right. And you can do this now or you can do this later. I don't think it particularly matters. Uh -huh. But if you secure that with your glue. Okay. To the top portion of your G-string, just above where your winkle would be. Okay. Oofed. Where, where's where's the glue? Which one's the glue? Um, I gave you a little pot of glue. It'll be the little square pot. Square pot. Oh, it's pink and sparkly. Mmm. Yes, pink and sparkly. Not that you'll really see it's it. It's the right consistency too for. <laughs> Very but if it ever falls off it. during the act, all you just need to just. Ooh. I'm enjoying this glue. <laughs> it is. It's got a strange, quite kind of viscosity to it. But yeah. It's a bit cummy. It's a bit cummy. Yeah. That like that's the more gutter way of saying what I just said. Accurate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I've got cummy rag. You've got a cummy got rag. A cum rag that you're going to affix to your g-string. Just above that little incision you made earlier. Hello. <laughs> now, okay. as I was trying to say earlier, uh -huh. if you want to disguise this uh, age-appropriate merkin uh -huh. and get rid of the grey, I have also allowed you a little decoration. So you should have another pot with uh -huh. some little glittery hair gel in there Ooh. and some extra glitter so you can tart it up a bit. So you just drop the glitter into the hair gel, however much you like. Give it a swig around. Uh, you're, you're you're way ahead. It's a good noise. <laughs> At the ASMR factor is quite it's quite there. And yeah, just apply that to the bushy hair. That is now even more cummy. Because <laughs> it's now like white. Your too. your cum has bits in. My, my cum does have bits in, which is why you need to be very careful what you put in your body, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and yeah, just uh, decorate your merkin. Okay, so just spread it on. Yeah, however you are. The pubis is very matted now. It is a matted pubis, but, you know, this well, is why I usually shave knife. it off. Okay. So where did you get this idea from, Mist? <laughs> um, from your usual co-host, Lee. You took in a suggestion off Lee? Yes. Was he drunk? Um, possibly. Okay. 
But yes, we like the idea of a magic merkin. Magic merkin, now that doesn't sound slightly. <laughs> um, and just because um, we're, we are not a, a graphic show, no matter how lewd we may be, in order to demonstrate this, mm. um, well, I have got you a banana oh. to represent the uh, Percy's pickle. Percy's pickle? Percy's pickle. If you want to just... Are you inferring that my penis is pig-like? <laughs> yes. Really? And therefore... Oh, God. I, I did my... I did How my... far away <laughs> from your dick is your pubic hair? <laughs> I, I did do my quite low. <laughs> let's, let, let's adjust that a little bit, I think. <laughs> I can sew that back up later. <laughs> what the hell? I know, I did do quite low there. Oh, oh no, sorry, I won't. I'll, 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 I'll accept what I've done. Go with the artistic flow. So now we stick a banana through. Now you stick a banana through, just so we can see what it would look like. You see, you asked me to make a, a hole that size appropriate, but not for the banana. You asked for it a, a hole appropriate for me, so this isn't working. Oh, I think you overestimate yourself quite a bit. My bollocks are huge. <laughs> <laughs> I have to buy bigger underwear than my waist for big bundle. So yes. You can now see what this little uh, fancy, beautiful piece of appendage will look like on your body. And if you're lucky, I'll let you see what it really looks like later. Uh, but remember, if you can't get any peen or any vagine or anything in between, be a crafty queen. So, the merkin looks just like this! Has anyone got a magnifying glass? So rude! Doesn't it look pretty? Looks mangled. You try to please some people. No one's been pleased by that, miss. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, somebody will enjoy it, I'm sure. It wasn't so much the, the fact it looked like it had been hit with a sledgehammer, it was the weird smell that was coming off it too. <laughs> Again, composty. <laughs> Some people don't just enjoy a good frame. You don't just go to the Mona Lisa and go, oh, look, it's a pretty picture. You go, That's exactly oh. what people go to see the Mona Lisa for. To it look would at be... the picture. <sighs> they don't go, oh, look at the framework on look that. The framework. Is that a mitre joint or a button exactly. terrace? Exactly. Bullshit! They go, oh look, that's that Monita. Oh, she, oh, she's watching me. She's watching me. She's watching me. She's the Mona Lisa would be beautiful and the Mona Lisa, but it is housed in the Louvre, which is a beautiful building. It, where something is placed and how it is placed helps contribute to enhancing the beauty that is already there. What if there's no beauty there like your cock? Anyway, that's almost the end of the show for now. But on screen you can see our contact details. It is at the Kud TV on social media. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Just look for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye. What happened? Yeah, she went. It's in the back of my neck.